we've already seen we've already seen a little bit on functions here now in this tutorial I hope to really clarify some things here and um hopefully I can do that so let me go ahead and make another function here so when we make a functions here we know we need a type and we need to give it a name here in this case I'm gonna call mine F here and then we give it two parentheses here because that's just that's just gonna have to be there because that's just or otherwise it won't work now in this case I just um I want to return something here let's say I return and I'm just like a 2.718 just a random number and um, if I uh, this function doesn't do anything at all it does absolutely nothing so if we call this function here you know it's just gonna go through here and it's gonna return this number here well we don't need we don't know what the return value does yet well um well so far this function doesn't really do anything here so let's look at this return value here basically if I were to see out this function here this is only gonna output the return value here so let's trace this here alright so this is this function does not do anything at all in this case it outputs the just the 2.718 piece here because what it does um, the, the compiler is going to go through here when it sees this code here when it sees this piece here the name of the function it's going to come jump straight to this scope here and it's going to start executing things in here in this case the only executable code is the return statement so it only it, this will always output the return value of here so that's basically what this does. So we can do we can use calculations with this. We can say two times that entire function and get values for it. So we can use our we can start uh, using that as this, uh, functions here. Now we're going to <coughs> learn something new here, and hopefully it'll help us uh, understand what these what these uh, things do here. So now, right inside these parentheses here, we can have the function take some uh, parameters. So the, for our first parameter can be of any type. Let's say it's a double, and we call it x. So in this case, when we declare our function here, we say now our function has to take in a value of x here. Okay. Well, let's say this is uh this role returns something like two times x plus one here so basically this is a variable that's declared here and we do not initialize these here we do not initialize these why do we not why don't we initialize these because basically us the uh you know we can use this variable here and it does vary based on our input value here so i can output things I can output F of now it has to take in a double type so we can say 2 F of 2 okay well right here this is basically saying when the compiler sees this here it's it's this is basically going to um plug in 2 for here so first right here when it sees this function here it's gonna jump straight to here now it knows that this 2 is going to go into the value of x here. So this number 2 here is going to be passed into the value of x here. And then it's going to return 2 times 2 plus 1, which will be 5. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Because this right here, we can change this number to 3. And it'll output 7. We can, you know, we can put this through a while loop with have or have random numbers in here. You know, we can put basically just a random number in here too. If we use the rand, you know, mod three here. Now we need to include those libraries here, but we can still do that. You know, and um. 
but in this case we will need that library if you really want it to be a different number every time but okay so we can we can basically put like a two times six minus three and it'll you know that's just a fancy nine so right here this evaluates to this evaluates to nine here two times six minus three it'll put that in for x and then it just executes this so that's the thing on functions here now let's try something different here so notice that there's a squiggly here because it doesn't it it wants to me to type in a number here because it needs to take a parameter it will not compile or compile here so let's say, say I make a variable called int let's say it's a x here or no let's say it's a z and it equals 7 well we can also put in this z here now notice here even though it's an int here, this will remember the conversions that we talked about. This will convert it into a double here when it does that. But it takes it costs some uh, time here. But usually the compiler, the code will run quicker if you're making everything the same type. The double here. But either way, we can put in variables of here. Now I want to uh, clarify something here that the uh, the Z does not actually get passed into here it's only the value of Z in this case Z happens to be equal to 7 here now that's important here because basically I'm gonna send a copy of that Z equal to 7 here so basically this is just a constant number here and it's equal to 7 and then it's passed into here and uh, that's the point I want to get across. So I can type in z minus 3. In this case it happens to be 8, so it should output 9. Oh, I mean it's 4. That's what I meant, but it outputs 9. So 7 minus 3 is 4. And this is going to be passed into that. So it's only the value right in here. It's just the value, not the variable itself. It's going to be passed into this function here. So 4 is going to be as equal to x. And it has nothing to do with the z because within this scope here, this guy here does not see the variables over here. And this scope here does not see the variables that's over here. So if I call this x here, let me call this x here, these are two different x's here. The x here is different than the x here. Because remember from the last tutorial that we can declare two variables with the same name as long as they're in two different scopes here and the same rules of, of scope apply to this situation as well when we have functions here that's why the issues of scope will come up and uh, we'll we'll see more problems with scope later on and it's not really a problem it's more like a it actually helps us scope isn't really a problem it's actually a uh, the opposite of a problem okay so now let's say we make a variable in here. We can make variables in here. Let's say we called y and it is equal to uh, uh, x minus 3 here. Okay, just picking something here. Then I want this to return x times y. Alright, now let's say I make another variable here. y is equal to 7 here. Right here, mm. well, let's say I uh, put in x here. Well, this x is going to go to this x here, just the value here. In this case, 7 is going into x here. Well, look at here, it's going to take y and subtract 3 from it here. Actually, let me make this a uh, 21 here. What do you think is going to happen to this y here? Nothing is going to happen to that y. Because looking at the rules of scope here, this y here does not change this y here because they, they do not see each other. They are not visible to each other. So 
So we took 7 times 4 here because 7 minus 4 is 28. But right here, if I were to just output, let me enter a new line here. And then um, I output Y. Well, look, these are two different Y's because they're in two different scopes here. And that Y is always going to be 21 here. So these variables up here, they, can, they cannot manipulate any variables that are down here. Our only links between these two scopes here is passing in values through this parameter here. Like I can make this 8. We can pass values through here and the return value here. Now we can only return one value here. So let's say right here I made another one here. Let's say I called it double. And I called it Z. Okay, so look at this. This red squiggly comes up here. Because it wants a second parameter here. This takes two parameters here. In this case, I'm taking 8 and 7. Now, notice this case here. In this function here, the Z doesn't do anything. The Z does absolutely nothing here. But just, just to show you that we can pass in values to Z here. But the, the point is, though, that even though Z doesn't do anything, we still need to give it something, just to give it something. And nothing will, not much will change. And that Y, this Y here, is another point here, does not change this Y here because this Y here, made in this scope, is completely different than this Y here. So that's where these rules of scope are coming from, so don't think you can change the variables up here by calling a function here. Now you might think that seems kind of limited, but it's not. And we're going to go over ways of how we can, well, later on, we're going to go over ways of how we can um, um, bend the rules of scope and change va values like that through functions. But that's not till later on here. Okay, so that's going to, I'm going to stop right here. And there's going to be a, Hopefully that clarified a few more things. And um, I'm gonna, still going to talk about a little bit more on scope. And then we can start getting into some, to some uh, bigger problems here. Now that we have a scope, now that we have to know how to use certain a few functions here. So what we learned here is that we can now put in parameters here. So these guys here are called parameters here. And we can use these whenever we want. Like we can use... We can say z is equal to y, the y plus 1 here, because z is already declared here. Now the value, z is not, in, you don't initialize these because these are going to be given values here when the functions are called in the main loop. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, and I will finish up, but we'll keep on, we'll see how far we get in the next tutorial, and hopefully we can get through these rules of scope and, uh, and these rules of functions here.